just won't be the last thing you'll see in your life. I mean, me dancing and singing. Can you hear me well? Up uh, here. It's nice to see you all after these two wonderful presentations. Tired, but still. Hopefully, uh, you'll be there with us for the other party. Thanks for joining. So, for a change, I'll talk in English. Let me speak from my heart. Maybe you know. Thanks, guy. I just spoke. Uh, so I'll talk about uh, Latin American course market, about what is going to happen with it. Well, it's just my version, my subjective opinion, so don't blame me if I'm wrong. Uh, you can ask questions and uh, work with, with me afterwards or grab me and talk to me uh, in the press. Uh, so who I am? I'm product owner at Tech Systems. Product owner is actually a project manager. It's just a fancy name uh, for it. Uh, so, uh, as for education, I'm an MBA, so I'm a business person. It will not be a technical keynote, it will be more business-like keynote. Uh, and you can find me on Facebook and LinkedIn, add me, chat with me, whatever. Uh, so, uh, I'll start with a little intro on who we are, because obviously not everybody understood Russian, and uh, it's never enough to tell it just once. Uh, then uh, I'll throw some outline on on what's happening to let an e-commerce market right now. Uh, we'll maybe try to identify some trends. Uh, then we'll talk about scaling up because this is something uh, which we expect will happen to our uh, online retailers in Latvia. Uh, then we'll talk about why people develop custom solutions and why everybody in Latvia will be developing custom solutions in this market. And then I'll throw a little business roadmap for the next few years and we will tell about some challenges for the developers, uh, also for 2016-2017 in Latvia. So, uh, let's start about Infosys. We're already, I think, 10 years, if I'm not mistaken, of course, is it right? Uh, into developing complex e-commerce solutions and business automation systems. Timo already told about our biggest client, it's a huge holding in the US that has around 50 online shops and the account is growing so they're acquiring even more companies uh, all of their store, uh, stores uh, sell a total of uh, probably half a million worth of products uh, per year uh, half, a million, half a million, sorry a time do you always stay? Uh, so in Latvia you probably sell many pins, you sell a telephone shop and most of us have shops in XMAP, which is also one of our, of our plans. Uh, so I'll try to tell you everything as a story. So just imagine there is a little online store in Latvia which is called Horns and Hoops. If you read the book or saw the movie, you will understand the analogy. All right? uh, it is the one-stop shop for the hunters and the sales, I don't know, binoculars, and, uh, some boots, uh, rifle scopes, and stuff like that. Of course, uh, there's the chief of everything there, because Latvian e-commerce business is usually a small business with five to ten people. Uh, we'll call him Alfred, he will not be a star. Uh, here he's CEO, CTO, CFO, CEO, and chief of everything else. It is actually his real email signature. Uh, okay, just imagine uh, he got rich uh, because of his online shop. This is uh, real story, people get rich, and I'll couple of those people. Uh, and uh, he is thinking uh, what to do with the money, what to do with the revenue after these uh, two hundred four years in the business. So he's thinking, why don't I buy a Porsche Cayenne? It's a full car. And then he thinks, okay, now I want to invest, what's going to happen? No, I need to reinvest, but he doesn't know uh, how, where, and what actually uh, he needs to do. So he changes his mind and books the ticket to the US. Why US? Because this is the absolute center of all uh, research and development for all the trends, for all the new things that happen to e-commerce industry. So he goes to US. He'll probably visit one of those uh, e-commerce events I googled within 30 seconds. Uh, so there is something happening every two weeks and it is big. Uh, actually, people go there our clients, our partners in these states visit those events, mostly for networking reasons. So they find vendors, find suppliers, find business partners. 
and also find some interesting things in business models of other people, take and borrow, and of course make us develop afterwards. Uh, so nothing like that happens in Latvia. Probably there are two events a year. This is one of them. <laughs> and the second one is not for free, so... <laughs> so he went there, and he knew the following. Uh, E-commerce industry in the States is experiencing consolidation process. Consolidation is actually, well, bigger fish is smaller fish. Uh, so uh, companies like Amazon, like Walmart, uh, they acquire uh, small companies and they have to deal with it. Uh, there is no other way. Uh, if you ask what's about Latvia, uh, actually the same story. Latvia e-commerce market is consolidating and it has started the process maybe last year or maybe it's two years as it is happening. Uh, so uh, if you Google, you will find that uh, 220 of me was purchased by Beagle LT. Uh, this is a Lithuanian company, of course. Uh, something similar happened to Xnet just maybe six months ago. Uh, but one AOB is really successful and they have absolutely identical shops in Estonia and, and, and Lithuania. And there is a bunch of other shops. In the morning, I checked there were uh, 1,561 online shops in Latvia. Probably it's now five more. And maybe three of them already died. I don't know. It's that easy uh, to build an online shop. But what we will see in Latvia is bigger fish eating smaller fish, or just smaller fish dying. Uh, some statistics, they are really surprising to me. Uh, this is genius research uh, that came uh, just a couple of uh, months ago. Uh, it's about Latvia, it's about 2015 and 2016. 74% of population actually bought something online. Now this is surprising. Uh, most of these were girls, probably buying shoes. Voice credit cards. Uh, there are even more stats that are surprised. A third of these people are my parents' age. So uh, I thought that just young people buy something online. This is not true. A uh, third of the population are, uh, let's say, experienced people, seasoned people, let's call them that. And they go there uh, mostly because of the low prices. You know, online store business model. Uh, does not require a real store. Uh, so you have to add less markup on each item, so it costs less for the end customer. This is what I would be like. Next, they're always open, of course. This is the website. Uh, the next thing uh, why people love on this comparison is really simple. You just open a couple of thousand new browser and come back. Um, you see different prices, different specifications, and there is no uh, sales personnel who is trying to sell something you don't need and something really expensive. And of course there are some delivery methods you can choose, so you can buy something seamlessly within a minute and it will be delivered uh, just a few dollars. This is why everybody might be loves it. And there are even more surprising statistics. Uh, so we're still in Stone Age because our main e-commerce portal in the country is classified as it is the sense.lv. Everybody goes there. Everybody knows about it. Uh, and then, uh, from uh, this data, we see that Latvians love buying something for, uh, for cheap because they go to Southern ZMOV and, of course, to compare to me, which is not here. Probably it is not here because Genius are not partners with them. So they're not showing it <laughs> compared to me on this research. And that, uh, then you see one, uh, one A that on me, which is really popular. And there is also Cherry that on me that died a couple of uh, weeks ago. So coupons and if uh, such uh, discount sites like Groupon don't work in Latvia, uh, they will die. Uh, what starts working in Latvia is foreign uh, stores like eBay, Amazon, uh, AliExpress and Alibaba. What we'll see in the uh, next few years is people using more and more of those resources because they're cool. Uh, more surprising, uh, surprising data. They started digging up uh, some freely available information uh, which is the uh, papers, accounting papers of uh, our uh, big stores. Uh, and surprisingly, there will be four, at least four online shops this year, which will make total sales of 330 million euro. Uh, I didn't expect Latvian e-commerce market is that big, but actually if you compare it to 
a top 100 retailer in the States, uh, the entire Latvian market is smaller than uh, this retailer's sales. I'll be mentioning Optics Planet a lot uh, for one simple reason. Uh, we work with that project, we developed it, we continue developing it, and we will be continuing developing it, and we bring a lot of expertise we earn with it to the Latvian market and to the Latvian projects. Uh, so, uh, such shops like Heapsnet, not only totally sexy style will be uh, pins, a while today we work shop with Telecom, is built thanks to experience gained uh, while working with this American uh, project. This is why uh, they're actually cool. Uh, so, a little quiz for you, maybe to wake up. Uh, if you can guess who is who, here are three biggest online retailers in Latvia. It's their uh, growth rate in revenue uh, to years 2014. You can grab a free beer. Well, you can grab a free beer anyways, but it's more fun like that. So, what do you think? Who is who? No? Okay. One A, okay. And this one and this one? Oh, no ideas? Alright, this is 1A, 220 LP, and one shop. Uh, these guys are the biggest in Latvia. Ask for a turnover, uh, they may sell them online. Quite surprising, isn't it? Uh, Alright, uh, so all of these stores and the stores in the top 10 and the stores in the top 20 experience one uh, serious problem. Uh, it is a problem of scaling up. Uh, all of these stores started with the same business model. Uh, they took AutoCart or Magenta or PrestaShop or any other box solution uh, and started selling online. It worked uh, because the market was empty and it continued to work. Uh, but uh, it will work until a certain moment. Uh, Alfred uh, here is the same guy. He started with AutoCart, but he's not puzzled. Uh, he wants to earn more money uh, and don't really sp spend any effort on it. Uh, so he doesn't know what to do. Uh, the simplest thing, on our experience, is to add more sales channels. Uh, this might sound stupid, this might sound like something which cannibalizes your business, but it isn't. Uh, people in the US online stores in the US partner with eBay, partner with Amazon to increase their sales. Uh, as for our experience, the first year of sales on eBay on Amazon even, having, even though you have your online store, uh, will increase your sales by 10 to 15 percent. Quite cool, isn't it? So selling on Amazon is really simple. You go there, you register, you pay 40 bucks uh, on the second month after your free trial month. Uh, you basically upload your product data and you start selling. Well, there is an API, it's called uh, Merchant Web Service or something like that. So you can do it automatically, of course. And then you need to do three simple uh, things. First, sell and don't mess up. Uh, second, count uh, for reviews because the more reviews you have, uh, the higher your, your rank. And you have two targets. Uh, first target is to get actually under the box, and the main target is to get into the box. Uh, to get there, uh, you need to be competitive on shipping, competitive on price, and have a good record. That's it. And you start selling. Uh, we do it a lot with our uh, American customers. Uh, next thing is eBay. According to eBay, it's even simpler. List it, ship it, get paid. That's it. Uh, but in reality, it's more uh, complicated. Because at this point, uh, you might want to consider to stop investing in a box solution you downloaded for free. Because uh, to uh, send your shopping feeds, to synchronize uh, the product data, to synchronize your stock data, uh, with other parties means that you will develop something custom, something on your own. Probably your box solution is already nothing like it was initially because it has some modules on it, it has some custom code of yours. Uh, so you will have to develop something on top of it uh, and it will not be maintainable. It will be just waste uh, instead of investment. Uh, so at this point you have to already uh, to consider building a custom system. Many stores in Latvia have already crossed this border, they have ordered some custom e-commerce solutions. These are the biggest ones and probably the top 10 are not using uh, ready solutions to uh, make business. Uh, they do that for a couple of reasons. First of all, it increases your productivity because it's not generic, it's custom uh, built for you, for your processes. 
because a box solution is usually uh, very big, very generic. You use just 10% of what it offers, and you don't need 90% rest. Uh, then just building a custom solution can uh, enable you to have a competitive advantage because in this industry your competitive advantage is your features, maybe your responsiveness, uh, the speed of your site, uh, some bells and whistles which are not usually bound to UI or UX. Next advantage uh, that you'll gain after you order a custom solution is a quicker response time. So once you spot a trend somewhere in the US, I don't know, in Japan, anywhere else, all you have to do to follow it and to develop something is to issue a task to your developers or to your IT partners and they will do something tailor-made for your system and you will have it first. Uh, not after a couple of months and not as a, an extension of the market which is either free, either paid, uh, but usually bad. And uh, the last but not least, uh, building a custom system is really an investment. So it's M&D expenses, you can book some books pay tax after that, uh, but it's investment in your future and it is something you can sell together with your company uh, at some point, because at some point you'd like to sell, of course, to one ALV or Amazon or somewhere else. Uh, next reason is the speed. A couple of weeks ago uh, we noticed uh, how Amazon updated their application and we noticed the uh, PR text, which was on the app store and the update. They say that each millisecond matters, and they have dozens, hundreds, and thousands of developers who work every day to make their projects one millisecond faster. Uh, so they know what they're doing. And this is also backed up by some Kismetrics research, uh, which says that 40% of people leave the website if it doesn't work in three seconds. I don't know whether you're that patient and you want to wait for 10 seconds or 15 seconds, but uh, people in the US are not, probably who will not be uh, in a couple of years as well. Uh, so I ran a random test using uh, tools.pingdom.com the same year. Uh, it doesn't make sense uh, if you just analyze your website in it, but it makes sense if you run an analysis uh, and compare a couple of uh, resources. So the quickest one was sexystyle.tv. Apparently, this is really ironical, and you know, for that kind of shop. <laughs> but, but still, it's the quickest one. And the slowest one is actually the biggest, biggest shop in Latvia. Uh, one shop that we asked for revenue. I'm, I'm sorry, this is wrong information. One shop is called They are selling a very small amount of their online as a normal... Uh, ah, okay. Uh, so, Oh, I didn't, I didn't know that, but they're really successful. Uh, in, in the whole sector, but not in the retail. Okay, uh, okay, uh, thank you. Didn't know uh, their exact business model, just so somewhere to lose. Okay, so they're not on the list. Anyways, the uh, biggest ones, 1 ALV and uh, 220 ALV, are not that quick, even compared to other sites. Uh, you see these figures in Google, these were tested from American. Users. So Amazon loads for their users in less than a second, which is seamless. You don't really react that fast. So the next reason why you want to build something of your own, why you want to order your custom solution, is that it is scalable. Uh, if we take our platform as an example, uh, it is optimized in terms of caching. Uh, there is a little load of the servers, uh, everything is cached as much as possible. Uh, we use Elastica Index. Dmitry spent half an hour talking about so I don't want to say anything about it. Um, and it works uh, in the way that it is really simple for you to plug and play. So, uh, another uh, web blog. So, if you're about to launch uh, some crazy advertising campaign, send millions of emails, or uh, spend billions of, uh, billions of bucks on uh, AdWords. Uh, you're sure that the website will not uh, die, you just plug in another web node and that's it. It, it expands. Also, it now uh, supports PHP 7, which makes it faster to load. It may seem surprising, but 
developing a custom solution not only uh, allows you to grow, uh, but you can cut the costs uh, on the way to growth. The main uh, and the most maybe significant or simple example of that would be how you deal with the product data. Once you build a shop, you know that you have plenty of products. Each one uh, requires some description, some titles, some texts people would read and robots would read, of course. Uh, it needs a lot of manpower if you're doing it manually. In the custom systems, we use so-called spinner templates. Uh, so these are some preset rules for generating text uh, that work and that uh, deliver uh, some pieces of uh, real, real, real uh, product descriptions and other information you see on a product page, list page, category page, any other page on the website. In English. Pardon? In English. In English, of course, but uh, it works uh, in any language. So, uh, if we needed to create some product descriptions in Latvian, uh, the same mechanism, the same tool in the backend uh, would help. So, uh, next thing you don't do manually is you don't upload products after some state. You need special mechanisms. In our case, uh, we parse some product information from the vendors uh, who deliver their products to us. And the merchandising people, the web content people, uh, need to spend uh, little effort to do that. Uh, they just uh, upload some CSV or uh, run some. Uh, API jobs that, uh, that parse the data and then the data is sent to the website so nobody is opening you know, open card back, uh, backend uh, goes to category, adds product, adds pictures maybe, you know, nobody does that on a big scale everything is automated then of course C SEO is uh, automated as well all of the meta types, meta descriptions, titles, H1s, H2s the markup, everything else is generated by special mechanisms, by algorithms. It is based on uh, the same spinner templates and on product data, uh, which is there on, on, on the pages. Uh, this helps our clients uh, run really well in Google. They are higher than Amazon in their niche uh, because of that. This is their competitive advantage, actually. So, uh, the bottom line is, after you develop a custom solution, uh, you have to code, or buy code, or develop code, uh, not add extra manpower. So, you need to automate everything. This is how uh, the Spinner template looks for us. Uh, looks difficult, but any person can learn how to use them, how to you know, create such descriptions in a couple of hours, maybe up to a day. And it results into something like that on the website, and uh, this is pretty unique. Google perceives it as something unique and uh, customers perceive it as uh, human-written text. Uh, so we have literally tens of thousands of these uh, Spinner templates for uh, different sections of the website, for different categories, for different brands, uh, which works for half a million of products, of course, in 600 categories and uh, made by 2,700 uh, companies. And it works really well. Uh, of course, you don't need to develop at the very beginning. Recently, a couple of days ago, I found a service online. I am not affiliated with it, I'm not selling it. So, if you just want to uh, go and see how it works, they have some videos explaining in detail how Spinner Template works. And they have even a free trial, so you can give it a try with your shop. If you have it, will show your uh, uh, boss, your technical director. Uh, maybe it will help you cut a lot of costs while creating important data. So the next important thing is of course search engine optimization. Uh, Alfred also knows about it. Um, because Alfred uh, ordered some schema uh, markup for, for his website. There isn't really much um, of that. Uh, the rules are simple and are uh, quick and uh, all of it isn't really used a lot in Latvia. I especially uh, checked uh, the source code of some, some websites that they don't really have it. But Alfred, of course, uh, wants to achieve much with little costs. So this is what he'll be doing. He'll be uh, using different markups. In the US, it works even better. The same schema.org markup 
uh, with some slight changes, helps you uh, break up your product details in the Spotify search on your uh, Apple device. And of course, there is Google Shopping, which will come uh, one day uh, to Azure as well. Uh, so uh, their items are listed as well in Google Shopping, in, in Google search. We don't see it in Azure yet, but we will after some time. Uh, what we see in our country is that our biggest retailers don't even have a mobile website. On the left is one ILV, in the middle is uh, one shop only, but it wasn't a retailer, right? It was a wholesaler, so not a new deal not having a mobile website <laughs> in 2016, right? And the guys on the right uh, are 220 LV. They actually have a mobile application. Okay, it sucks big time because it's uh, just a web view translated from Lithuania and translated poorly. Part of it is still Lithuanian, but, uh, but they're heading somewhere to the very future. Uh, and they even have some markup on their website. So um, in this aspect, they're cool. And one ALV will try to catch up, of course, if they want to uh, compete for uh, the mobile segment. It's more than half of the traffic right now. So let's get, back to, let's get back to developers. What they will do uh, is make the UI better and the UX better uh, during the next few years. Otherwise, we won't be able to compete with Amazon, with eBay, with AliExpress even. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. So uh, what they will do is mm, work with checkout. They will optimize checkout because now if you go to any online store in Latvia, you'll see that you have to make tremendously many amount of actions and interactions to actually buy something, especially on checkout. It asks you for some unnecessary information and doesn't uh, let you uh, buy with PayPal Express, uh, for instance. Very really few people do that. Uh, I'd love to buy with PayPal because it's just one click. Uh, probably uh, really doesn't. Of course, the checkout will be mobile friendly. Hello, one ALV. Hello, 20, uh, 25 million sales in 2015. And of course, everybody will be developing uh, my account sections to store some information about the users uh, to help the checkout faster afterwards. A little example about the same one ALV. They're not wholesaler, right? They're a retailer. I wanted to buy something there, I chose Omniva as a delivery method and then I got to the payment screen. It showed me 13 payment method, methods. Out of those, just four would work. Why wouldn't they hide the ones that are not working? Uh, why did they make me read all these 13 cards and actually click on them? Because I was too lazy to read, I just clicked before I saw a green light. I don't know. Uh, another question uh, from the audience, why do you think uh, mobile app is better than two retailers and one wholesaler uh, in that? There's just one simple reason, why are there a better uh, thing for the user? Yes, uh, Alex. Pardon? It allows you to pop up your account with ease. Pardon? It allows you to pop up your account with ease. Yeah, it allows you to save your payment method. Nobody else does. You have to add your credit card details on almost every store in Latvia. Why? I don't know. Everybody will do it. They are an electronic money institution, so they have license from uh, Financial Capital Markets Commission, so therefore they are allowed to do that. Right, but you can integrate Braintree. Yes, this is the different story. Uh, they are uh, payment method themselves. So yeah. They provide a service integrated into their payment uh, structure. So it's not vice versa. Uh, what I say the reason is actually uh, not the problem is to our selling. Uh, the only biggest one, basically only one, uh, our card transaction service. Uh, it's first data? First data. They are actually not offering such service. They are? No, of course they are. First data is not there. First data is not there. But there are banks which offer this in that. And there's also Braintree, which can be uh, uh, used, and Braintree allows you to save your payment methods. It's just a different payment gateway uh, for you to choose. But there is a different percentage on transactions which you can get for from first day and Braintree is cheaper. No, so it is. No. It is first day. It is. You, 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 you just need to go to the bank and that to get your special <laughs> No, but if it is a the way Braintree, the same way as the way. Braintree is 
it's just substantial, a substantial scale, uh, you would probably build a few buildings and create budget. Yeah, Dima, you wanted to tell us that? Yeah. Uh, as I know, the range provides about uh, 20,000 uh, turnover per month for free without any charge fees. So, yes, yeah, small stores can easily yeah. generate this range. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah. If they're not all. So it's just a matter of I don't know, business people and Google. Okay, uh, let's move on. Uh, let's so let this discussion maybe into our experience in here. Uh, so what we do uh, at Optics Flat is a very, very huge Python section which allows a user to store a lot of information for him uh, to make the life easier. So there's not only just that, this book with his delivery address, uh, not only his payment methods is safe, uh, safe, but also communication preferences. So he can choose what kind of emails uh, he would like to receive. Uh, maybe he's interested in hunting, maybe he's interested in photography, uh, he can set it up for him. Uh, he can pick his uh, preferred delivery method. So, for instance, he wants to get everything by air the same day. Uh, this option will be selected automatically once he checks out uh, the next time. The key reviews, uh, there is his special internal money. In Latvia, I saw store credit just on 220 only, so uh, really advanced in this term, in this aspect. There are his gift certificates, and somewhere by the end of this summer, there will be also uh, questions and answers in the section. So, he will be able to ask if you need questions. All of these features create an incentive for the user to become a member, to register, because it makes his second, third, fourth, and checkout way easier. Uh, and this is why uh, we do it. Second, uh, visit of the customer, or in generally, returning customers are more valuable, are twice as valuable as the new customers. Uh, this is information from Latvia, from Seven World, from some marketing research, uh, but not I can back it, uh, back it up with our Google Analytics data. Uh, it shows uh, exactly the same stats for, for uh, the United States. Returning customers are twice as valuable as the new ones, so you want to return them, of course. We do it with mail. Uh, we do a lot of mailing uh, with uh, our clients there in, in the States. Some uh, Email campaigns uh, may have half a million of letters sent out. They are targeted. Uh, some of them show tremendous uh, uh, CVR, which is conversion rate, which is uh, the percentage of people who buy after uh, receiving an email. And all of the email plans uh, make up to 20% of sales. Again, 220 only. Get, get a cookie for using a lot of emailing. They're probably the only. Who does it a lot? I don't know uh, how their uh, successes are. Maybe here's somebody from 220 will be able to share. Uh, but what I'm sure uh, is that other online stores will be doing something like that. But such successful emailing is possible only if you uh, have your custom solution because it integrates with your ERP, it integrates with your sales history with some preferences, with the same elastic index, uh, so we can target email campaigns very specifically to the needs of the customers. This is why they work that well. So some tips to you, make your emails personal. Uh, don't send something uh, which starts with hello. Send something which starts with hello me. Uh, make them targeted, so don't just sell some bulk emails uh, about your sales. Uh, try to uh, Target at least based on your uh, sales data. For instance, if a person bought a tent, he's likely to buy, I don't know, uh, camping boots or some other camping stuff. Uh, try testing your emails on different email plans. There's a tool on the web which is called Witness, which we use a lot for all of our projects, and it helps you uh, see if your email layout is not broken. And in the future, of course, you will use deep link and our online stores will use deep linking, especially the ones, okay, let's say V1, which is again 220 LV, uh, which has a mobile app. Deep linking allows opening a product page in the application.
from the email. So you click on the link or the picture in your email, it opens in the application exactly on that product page. It works with us uh, in the States, and in Latvia, well, it will work in a couple of years, of course. Uh, so what's coming up next, even next, next, next? Uh, this year, next year, and probably in a few years. We'll see Android Pay someday, hopefully. Now it works in UK and US. Uh, hopefully, uh, we will see it somewhere else in Europe. Uh, this fall, uh, we'll see uh, Apple Pay on iOS 10. I don't know when it will get here to Latvia, but it will make a mobile checkout easier. Uh, what we'll have more is instant banks. Uh, if you watch the Google I.O. or if you watch the Google I.O. One, two, three, four. Okay, I'll tell. Uh, so Google announced a really revolution, I think, uh, which uh, removes the boundary between mobile web and mobile application. Uh, in a very, let's say, close future, it will not uh, be necessary for you to download the application itself. A couple of modules necessary to display a page from the tab will be downloaded automatically, and you don't need to install the app. So if you click on some link online, uh, the link opens as if uh, you opened it in the app without installing the app. Uh, it allows uh, to make customer experience better because apps work faster. And you can bring your user experience from your application to the web without uh, converting uh, the customer and without making him go to Play Store, download the app. This is what we have. And it will work together with app search engine optimization. So Google uh, will launch it somewhere uh, this year. It will mean that mobile application will be, will be indexed by crawlers. So we'll see a lot of that in the US, and in a couple of years uh, we'll see it in Latvia as well. Uh, this is something we won't see in a couple of years in Latvia. This is contextual commerce. Some cool guys in the States already are coding Telegram bots uh, that are chatting to your clients on your online shops. Uh, they're chatting and ha uh, are helping you buy something. So you can uh, ask some bots uh, for uh, something and they will guide you uh, towards uh, buying something. Uh, and contextual shopping will be built in, in, will be built in chats. Uh, maybe Google, of course. So if you're talking to your friend about going somewhere and buying a ticket, uh, an interface which will help you buy the ticket from this chat will appear. Uh, but this is uh, for us really science fiction. For US, this is reality in half a year. Uh, so let's not make you even more tired. Let's get to the summary. So the market will actually be consolidated even more. Little shots will die. Bigger shops will go. Uh, Middle-sized shops will order custom solutions and prefer them to box solutions. And the UI and user experience on, on big shops will, of course, become better. And it will work on mobile, hopefully, finally. So uh, Alfred now has a plan for the next few years. Hopefully, you also uh, have one. Uh, you know what to do with the feedback. You take a green card. <laughs> go to the box. <laughs> of course, you don't forget about the sponsors of today's event. And you can ask them some questions before you go uh, there to the ground uh, here.
guys I have I have an idea. Let's move to the sixth floor and continue these questions and answers that uh, there are asked and uh, who not want questions and answers we just let's start after party at sixth floor. So uh, thank you Nikita for uh, talk.